this does not cut out today, uh, like yesterday, but we're here to talk about business. If you saw my Instagram story, um, I hinted at it earlier and talking about business today, 2023, I tried to start uh, a couple different businesses and did I succeed? Did I profit? Did I fail? We're going to talk about that. So at the start of 2023, I read a couple books about money because I realized that I don't really know too much about the financial system or how money really works and how to build a business and how to become financially free. So uh, part of that was reading some books. Smart myself up. So uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad was the first book I read. Highly recommend. I was kind of skeptical. I put this in one of my, my blog posts, but like self-help books this is kind of like a financial self-help book. And I was kind of skeptical of it. Like, I don't know why exactly, uh, but I bit, uh, bit my tongue, I guess. Uh, and I went through and I bought it and it was a great book. I'm really glad I bought it and I don't know uh, why I was so reluctant to at first. But um, basically, it breaks down what money is, breaks down uh, how to become financially independent. And one of the biggest things that they talk about is not trading your time for money. So with a regular job, you're trading your hours for money, right? That's how you get paid, get your paycheck that way. But there are other ways that you can make money. And the idea is to start making money while you sleep. Um, let me just say too, it's not all about the money, but at this time, I kind of did think it was all about the money uh, because I'm in a job that I'm not crazy about. I don't hate it, but um, it's not it, like I've mentioned. So I wanted to become financially free, I still do. And uh, through this book, I realized there are different methods to do that. And starting a business is probably the quickest way to do that. You can do real estate as well. Um, basically, you wanna make money while you sleep because then you don't have to work as much. Um, or at least you can work on the things that you actually wanna work on instead of trading your hours for time. So that was book number one. Uh, book number two is Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. Um, I'll link both of these two in the description so you can check them out. Um, that one's a good book too. I won't go into that one too much. Um, so Rich Dad Poor Dad was kind of the one that inspired me to start some businesses. And I mean, if you know me, I, I kind of, I've tried businesses in the past. <laughs> like I started a barbering business in college. Um, I've kind of always had this idea that I would become an entrepreneur um, or start a business of some sort. So uh, 2023, I just realized like in January of the year and kind of like leading up to the start of the year, it's like, man, I'm in this job, like I'm pretty comfy now. My, my paycheck is fine. Um, I'm living comfortably. Um, if I don't make a move on this stuff, I'm gonna regret it for the rest of my life. So I might as well just try. And I think at the time, I didn't think I was a entrepreneur. Like I would research businesses, but I wouldn't actually do anything. So I, I definitely was a entrepreneur. <laughs> um, but here's the thing, you gotta try things to figure out what you don't like. And 2023 was a year where I found out a lot of things that I don't like and basically that brought me here and figure out what I do like. Um, so the first thing that I figured out I don't like is Etsy. So you might think, you know, a guy that looks like me, bald dude with a beard, um, would not be your first pick for someone who owns an Etsy store, okay? <laughs> uh, but Anyway, that was something that I came across, um, print on demand specifically, which is essentially it's a form of drop shipping, but 
it's not like the traditional drop shipping like you see these guys like uh like seb and sebastian skata like they're probably the two big names in drop shipping youtube game um it wasn't like them i didn't i didn't want to set up a spotify or a, a shopify short store jesus shopify store <laughs> so uh i didn't want to go through all that um it feels a bit scammy but it, i don't think it is really um given the amount of research that i think it's legit it just drop shipping as a whole i think is not something that i want to do and this is something i found out through etsy print on demand and um I'll get into that in a little bit, but basically what I was selling were t-shirts just like this. So this is an original, uh, my store name was called Raw Flare Designs, R-A-W Flare Designs. My initials are R-A-W and um, yeah, that was the store name. And it's still alive, but you can go look it up now. It's not t-shirts, now it's coffee mugs because I pivoted, um, but yeah, this is the first uh, prototype, Day So Friday Zero, inspired by Mr. Y and uh, Hesse. <laughs> um, they used to have it on their fridge, a little countdown for uh, the day so it was Friday. So uh, yeah, this was the first one. Um, I started making other sorts of designs. Probably the biggest or best sellers that I had were like, horoscope zodiac sign uh crew neck sweaters which again like if you're buying that you don't think that i'm on the other end of that i think that's hilarious <laughs> like all these moms buying these sweaters for their daughter's birthdays <laughs> and it's like me giving them them um but anyway print on demand basically uh through etsy the way you can do it is you set up your designs you pick your designs you can actually buy designs off of uh, creators, off of Creative Fabrica, uh, which is what I did a little bit of. I made some of my own, but um, a majority were from there. So it's just easy and they're, they're designed for that. They're made for print on demand use. Um, so I have these designs, right? I put, I put the listings up on Etsy and then Etsy connects to a print provider and the one I use is called Printify other people use Printful and Printify is basically the ones who take care of all the fulfillment they log the order they press off the shirt they send it out for you and that's pretty much it it's pretty hands-off for me as the person putting them up all I have to do is put them up put up new listings see which listings do the best um, do my research, you know, product research. And um, I mean, it's hands off, which is nice. But the reason why it's not that profitable, or it's tough to be profitable, is because it's all handled by someone else. Like you're going to pay them a premium for doing all that stuff. And my numbers showed that. Um, one of the biggest expenses too, while we're talking about the money of the the clothing part of it and the coffee mugs eventually. Um, here's a coffee mug, by the way. Yeah, little frog, bro, relax. I'm literally just vibing. Stuff like that. It's like little quirky things that people spend money on because people buy dumb shit like that. That's something I realized. Like, think about how much stuff you bought. I bet you bought something pretty dumb that you probably never used. And I know I have like, um, anyway, that's why I'm trying to make money off the internet in some way. Um, that's why I started doing that at 2023. Um, cause I realized that. And, uh, anyway, for, for Printify and Etsy, my, my drawbacks for it as a business model are one, you can't control the quality. There's no quality control. Like I had a few times where someone would get their hoodie or t-shirt and it would be like messed up. Like the design was wrong and like 
for me personally, I can't do anything about that, which isn't great. Like you can talk to Printify and they can try to fix it for you, but it's kind of like out of my hands, which isn't great. You want to have control over your quality. Um, the second thing is uh, the margins are just tough. Like you're you're paying. Uh, I gotta keep wiggling my mouse because I have a number on the screen of what I netted for the year total. So I'm gonna read that off in a little bit. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but my laptop keeps fading out. Uh, but for the second drawback, the margins, like you're paying, you're paying premium for Printify to do all this stuff for you. And the margins are pretty tough. Like, uh, you don't want to charge someone $50 for like an Etsy uh, sweatshirt or hoodie. And you kind of have to, um, like to make enough money off of it or to even become nearly profitable, you kind of have to because print divide, like that stuff isn't cheap. So that's why I kind of pivoted to the, to the mugs because the cost to make a mug is way cheaper than it is to make clothing. So I figured like, oh, let me try that out. And uh, it's still tough because you have to pay for advertising to get your listings up in the queue when people search for things like people were to search for frog coffee mug right and i didn't pay for advertising the listing for this when you search that would be on page like 20 um if there were that many frog coffee mugs which there probably are there's so much there's so much stuff on etsy um anyway uh you have to pay for advertising and the advertising adds up and you're kind of in this game of like, can I sell enough where I'm making enough profit to counter the money I'm spending on advertising and then all the fulfillment stuff. So it winds up for me, it weighed in the other direction. I was negative for the year. Um, I kind of first part of the year, I spent like two weeks to a month, uh, two weeks, like going really hard on the clothing and then like another two weeks after that to complete the month of like just kind of surveying things seeing if I want to continue with it and uh, I let it run for a while and then over the summer I was just like dude what am I doing uh, I'm, I'm getting these orders I have to like answer people like like oh you wanted a large like oh I'm sorry like let me get you that and I just was like tired of it, to be honest. Um, my heart wasn't in it. And I realized I don't really like that. But then uh, come the fall, I tried to I tried to relaunch with the mugs and I was like, yeah, let me try the, the better profit margin. Still, I, I did it for like two weeks and I was like, yeah, what am I doing? <laughs> What's the point of this? Like, I'm not having that much fun. It's interesting to learn, but then I kind of got bored of it. Um, so this was the physical product route. So let's put that over here in the process of looking up all this stuff on Etsy. I came across digital products, so it could be like a planner, um, some sort of like, I see like ADHD trackers on there. Those are really popular. Um, and the thing that I came across that I, pursued was resume templates. Now you might think like, who's gonna buy a resume template off of Etsy? Like that's not a thing that people come there for. They come there for like personalized shirts or like bachelor party stuff. But there are so many resumes on there. Some companies on there crush because the margins for digital products are so good. It's like 99% pretty much. You just have to pay to list it on Etsy and then that's it. Um, there's no delivery. They just get a file download and then that's it. So I saw that and I was like, all right, well, uh, the margins will be better. So that problem is solved. But um, I went through it and I realized that uh, after making like 20-ish resumes, resume templates rather, um, I just 
didn't want to be the one answering people with questions about, oh, like, how do I, how do I move this uh, on my resume that you gave me? Like, how do I, how do I uh, change the font to the, the font that you have? Like, I didn't want to be the guy doing that. That's just it felt like a waste of time to me. So I have all these resume templates I never actually launched. Um, so if you need one, hit me up because I got you on that. But uh, I never launched that. I might still delve into the digital product world because I think it's, I think I could put something together uh, that's pretty good, like a planner of some sort. But we'll get there. Um, so that was my Etsy uh, endeavor. <laughs> and here's my number. So uh, for the raw flare designs, the clothing and the mugs, my expenses were 2,588.54. My total of uh, profit, or sorry, my total revenue was 2,400, Jesus, 2,046.60. So, um, my net net was negative 541.94. So, almost 542 bucks I lost, um, for the resumes. I never actually launched, so I never had any revenue for it. Um, but for each of these different ones, I set up an LLC through Inkfile, which if you're thinking about doing this, don't do that until you start profiting. It really doesn't matter. You're, you're going to be a, you could just do it as a sole proprietor anyway. Um, so that stuff is like, like to set up an LLC on Inkfile is like 400 to 500 bucks. So for the resumes, um, I had $587 spent on different like services plus the LLC. So the total of both of those together was I lost a thousand hundred twenty eight and ninety four cents. So you might be thinking, why would you spend over a thousand dollars on Etsy and one business that you never even launched? And uh, yeah, I mean, that's a fair question. Um, I think I probably asked myself that uh, over, the, over the past year, but um, I think, you know, you have to try things to find out what you don't like, like I said before, and there are things from each of these that I realized I didn't like. And the other thing that I, I learned is that the skills that you gain from trying things like this are going to stack on top of each other. Like to this day, I still use Canva, which is a, a design software um, to design different things for, for this, what I'm doing now. And, you know, obviously I was looking at clothing and like different designs for Etsy specifically um, and for resumes. But the more you look at that stuff, the more you kind of develop an eye for design and you develop uh, a taste and taste is everything. Um, you might be thinking like, how does uh, something like this affect like what I'm doing now, like trying to build this YouTube and personal brand game up. And like the first thing that comes to mind is fonts. Like I know so much about fonts. I could pull fonts out of a hat if you want a certain type of font. I could just come off top and tell you which font you want. Like if you tell me the mood you want, um, I can hit you with one, uh, which is something I didn't realize. Like this is the classic meme font, all right? Um, pretty sure this is Anton, if you look it up, um, with a black outline on the white. Um, this is like a, a, a Calix font. I don't remember what this one is, so um, I guess I'm not that good at it. But uh, there are fonts that I use uh, more frequently, like the fonts that I'm using for the the uh, the thumbnails on here, the Avatar the Last Airbender font. Um, anyway, you pick up things when you try stuff like this, and. I think spending over a thousand dollars on trying different businesses 
is well worth it. I mean, the amount that you learn from that is so much better than paying like a thousand dollars for someone's course online. Like, I'm sure there are courses out there that are pretty good and worth getting, but I think just actually doing it yourself, you learn so much more because you're in there. You're in there, you're trying to make it work and you run into obstacles and you know, I pivoted to the mugs, didn't work out, but learned something from it. Um, the other thing that I've realized through the book and through just getting in like the whole entrepreneur money game, consuming all that type of content is that whatever you're doing, you're going to put 100% effort into it. So you might as well put 100% effort into something that could yield you a lot more money than something like this, right? How many mugs would I have to sell to make $100,000? Probably a lot, all right? Um, I don't know what the math is there, but probably a lot of fucking mugs, all right? Same thing with t-shirts, hoodies, like you need to sell a lot of them to make a decent chunk of change. Like if I wanted to replace my income from my nine to five job, I would need to sell a lot of shit. Um, so once I realized that, I was like, all right, well, what else can I do? And I was moving to Florida, that's where I'm at now, um, in Florida, and um, I kept seeing these Airbnb people online talking about how much money they were making off their Airbnbs in various cities in the US, and I got more into it, and I realized like, well, if I'm going to Florida, like a lot of people go there year round, you got snowbirds coming here, um, why don't I try that? So I tried it and I got really into it. I started following a bunch of people. I wound up joining someone's community where they kind of help you out. I was a little nervous about buying a house or, or even like renting one out for Airbnb arbitrage. So I was like, you know what, let me talk to someone who's done it before. And I paid a lot of money for that. Um, and I wound up doing it for like a few weeks. I met with my like coach guy. Really helpful to meet with him because um, he's doing it. Um, he was like a, he was in the health industry, healthcare industry, and um, he was a nice guy. He had a couple properties. He was still working his job in healthcare because he liked it, but um, he gave me a lot of tips and pointers on what to look for. And this was like in the fall of this year. So I moved over the summer down here and uh, basically I looked at it. I looked at all of the different houses in the area that I'm in. The regulations for Airbnbs are kind of tight down here. Um, also the, the property tax and the, the interest rates were just stupid, <laughs> stupid high. Like, the math wasn't mathing, you know? Um, and I asked him for help and there were options, I think. I think I was just not ready to commit to like buying a house to rent out like that. Because again, my heart wasn't in it. That's something I realized through the process. Like I was, I was hammering away at these spreadsheets trying to make the numbers work. And I was like, dude, what am I doing here? Is this really like what I want to do? So, didn't wind up doing that. Um, the other thing I realized is all these guys that do the Airbnb stuff, like their social media platform is literally just that. I mean, you got a couple guys like Ryan Pineda, like he branches out, he has like a podcast and everything. But um, I was like, you know what, is real estate really the thing that I want to do? Like I learned a shit ton through it. Like I learned a lot. Um, but also I learned that I don't want to do it. <laughs> and that's the main thing that I learned. Um, so anyway, that pretty much closes out the end of 2023. Um, and that's kind of what brought me here to creating a personal brand. Um, I always thought I was someone who would, you know, be one of those people that would get rich quietly and no one would really know. Till like, you know, you run into them at the supermarket like 
10 years later and they're just driving the uh, Beamer, you know, whatever. But uh, I never thought I was someone who would, who would come on here and put my face out there. Uh, but I see people online doing this and the thing is if you can build an audience online that believes in you and vibes with you and wants to hear what you have to say, then they're going to be willing to buy what you put out because they believe in you. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, very beginning right now. Like if you're here now, uh, appreciate you because we're in for a wild ride. I mean, it's very early days right now, but um, this is what I'm committed to. I'm having more fun now in this than I have in any of those other things that I've tried. And like I'm, um, I'm staying up late, I'm waking up early. I like forget to eat some days. And that is a sign that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And honestly, it's so much fun. Like, come on here, be an idiot, um, give some helpful advice, but you know, it doesn't matter. Like you can be goofy on camera, who cares? Like there's such a lack of authenticity these days. Um, and yeah, this is why I'm doing this challenge. This is why I'm on here. Um, all this stuff, by the way, I'm going to do this in a future video. All these videos right now, it's part of digital real estate. It's kind of the, the term. I don't know if I heard that somewhere, if I made it up, I can't remember, but basically I want to make these videos. I'm going to make some more put together videos, but each one of them, essentially you can think of it like a rental property because it's going to be there. It's going to be here forever on the internet. And if something pops off and goes viral, people are going to come in here and they're going to look back at all the things that I've posted so far. And the, the videos like these that I uh, just whip out the camera and start talking to it, it takes me like however long the video is to do and then to upload, which takes a while, I figured out. I mean, total, it probably takes like an hour and a half to two hours maybe. Not even if, if I just were to like grab the camera and rip a uh, front camera video. It's not that much time, but if, you know, eventually things get bigger, then each one of these has the potential to make a lot more money. So we'll get into that a little more. We'll get into the binge bank uh, in a future video maybe, but that's my business endeavors of 2023. Um, we're in 2024 now, so obviously this is what I'm, I'm building right now. I'm building out the content, but um, I have a couple ideas of things that I wanna try out. Like I mentioned the digital uh, product of some sort. Um, and who knows what will happen? Stick around to find out. Um, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you tomorrow. Peace.